Could Rangers be about to offload Serial Dessers? Well, that seems to be the report currently doing the rounds in a number of media sources at this moment in time. Yes, we are in transfer crazy speculation season. Yes, I know that things are getting, everything will get reported. And until obviously lots of things are officially announced by the club, then who knows? But it's not just the usual, you know, suspects, the usual uh, football insiders, Ibrox noise, etc., who, you know, do make some stuff up. Uh, it is a number of national newspapers also reporting this story. Now, this is the story as it stands. Now, this, we'll, what we're going to do in this video, we'll talk about what the story actually is, and then we'll talk about some facts. Uh there were serial deaths, some actual fact. Um, you know, for instance, I'll be absolutely clear in this. I don't rate serial deaths. I don't think he's a Rangers number nine. He's not a starting striker. He isn't good enough to play up for BR number nine. He isn't good enough for our club. Um, and I think, you know, the goals, you know, people say we well, scored 22 goals. Yes, but not all of those were in the league. Uh, his league goal scoring record is actually quite poor. And we'll look at that shortly. His European scoring record is very poor. Uh, so, look, we know it's a massive summer of change at Rangers. And it needs to be a massive summer of change at Rangers. It cannot be another summer where we allow uh, that lot to get further ahead of us. And we, we can't allow Celtic to win any more trophies. You know, they've already drawn level with us. We can't let, let them win a league title you know, without fighting back. And we know that Coppen and Clement are embarking on a bit of a rebuild as we speak now we have lost a number of players we've lost obviously Kamar Roof as a striker uh we've allegedly hopefully possibly brought in uh Hamza Igman so hopefully he is on his way to the club uh so yet no announcement at the time of recording but look so you know if Igman is if we count him in in with us uh it's him there's uh Dessas there's Danio Zach Lovelace at this moment in time, and you're talking obviously Josh Gentles from, from the B team or the under 18s. Uh, Mishaka Thompson can play up front, I know. Archie Stevens, although a winger, he can play up front. So, you know, there is options there, but not what I would call top, top end options. Danio possibly is. We don't know yet. It's too early, I think, to kind of sort of get a verdict on Danio. Now, Report in Greece, this is where it's coming from, is that Civil Dessas has handed in a transfer request, apparently not happy with the fact that Rangers are seeking a starting striker above him, which I think is, if it's that, if that I, look, I don't know if that's the case. That could be completely made up, could be a load of rubbish, you know, it probably is. But if it is true, I mean, let's just comment on it. Let's give opinions. It's always what football's about. We all have different opinions. Um, you know, if that's the case, so Dessas needs to get his head out of his ass because he isn't good enough to be a starting striker, you know, no matter what he might think. I mean, the amount of e well, big, what I would call big chances he missed, statistically 28 big chances he that man missed last season, including some some absolute sitters uh, that I think if we'd had Miofsky, Shankland, or even Seema fully fitting up front all season, it would have taken those chances quite easily. Now, according to, uh, you know, according, according to the reports, uh, it is a Greek team called uh, Pauk Salonika um, who are looking to strengthen their squad ahead of their Champions League qualifiers um, and have targeted Cyril Dessas uh, um, as an option alongside a pounding Martin Braith Braithwaite as well. Now, according to the reports that are coming out of Salonika and out of a number of Greek media outlets, uh, talks of Cyril Dessas and his representatives and Rangers are an advanced level and the player appears satisfied with the financial offer. Um, whether or not we can agree a fee uh, with the Greek club that what we are looking for. Now, look, the, let's deal with some realities here. Yeah. Some real realities here. Look, we paid four and a half million for Syria. I think, you know, personally was pretty poor, pretty poor business. He's not worth four and a half million. I don't think that is at all realistic for this player. So four and a half million pounds. Uh, if we can recoup some of that four and a half million, if we can get back some of that four and a half million, or at least get that four and a half million back for a player who is 29 years old, I think this is a fact we've got to deal with. You know, we, we've got to, to remember we are going to a trading model. We are looking at trying to make money from players. And if you've got a player who's 29, 30, and you can make your money back on him or even make a little profit on him, th this is what we've got to do. This is this is where we're at. And if someone is prepared to offer us four and a half, five million for Dessas now, I would say we snap their hands off for it. Because, look, give it another two seasons or another season, his value is only going to depreciate the more he is, the older he gets. You know, players, as they get older, their, their, their value depreciates as their contracts run down, their value depreciates. Now, Dessas, for me, is too inconsistent. He has too many weak points. Yes, he's a nice bloke. 
you know what? So what? I don't care. I'd rather have 11 nasty blokes out there playing for us um, if it meant we actually beat Celtic for a change. He misses a lot of very easy chances. Four at hearts last day of the season. Could have won us the game. Parkhead, he goes through on goal. He wants about 16 million touches before he actually shoots. Doesn't shoot. Gets blocked. Game changes. You know, we score that goal. The game changes on that on that one. Uh, you know, not only that, but then there was misses against Ross County. Two against Ross County. One of those two or both of those go in. You know, at the end of the day, we win that game. We don't lose it. Um, yes, it's not all down to him, but big misses on big chances do actually matter. And yes, the defence has been pretty shit this season as well. But when your strikers are not scoring the goals, when your defence can't cope, um, you know, it is a big concern. And 28 big chances, 28, that's a lot of chances. Yes, he scored 22, 23. I forget the exact number of goals now that he scored in the season, but he could have had 40. He realistically could have had 40. I mean, look at this lad's stats. Here's his stats. So he scored in total 30, he scored in total 13 premiership goals, okay? 13 in some 30 games, 13 in 30, less than one in two, which, you know, for a striker, you realistically want a striker to be scoring one in two. That, that's what you need, you know, and for the amount of chances that we create, the amount of, you know, times we put the ball in the back of the net, um, you know, we sh he should be scoring a lot more than that uh, for me. Um, so 13 in 13, 34 assists um, in the Europa League, one goal in seven. Now, again, is that good enough? You know, is that of, of a, a sufficient standard for a Rangers striker to only score one goal in the Europa League in seven appearances? Yes, that was a very good goal against Betis. But think of the misses against Benfica, the chances that if he'd taken against Benfica, we probably could have progressed um, or at least got, you know, got a draw and taken it to extra time and maybe even penalties. Um, three goals in the post top six split. One goal in the Champions League qualifiers, uh, three in the SFA Cup and only one in the League Cup. So 22 goals in 54 games, again, less than one in two. In the league, he averaged a goal every 144 minutes, which some of you may think is fairly impressive. But here's some statistics for you. Uh, Abdallah Seema, who missed a large part of the season and played as a wide man, uh, averaged a goal every 146 minutes. So only two minutes worse than Dessa's, yet he played out wide. I think you know that is a point worth noting that Abdallah Seema playing out wide, um, you know, actually had a you know only two minutes difference, and his conversion rate was a whole lot better than uh, Cyril Dessas. I honestly believe that if we put uh, Seema through the middle, he would have scored 25, 30 goals easily last season and would have outscored Cyril Dessas quite easily. Um you know, uh, 11 goals for Seema in 24 games. Dessa's 13 in 30. Um, you know, that's pretty poor. Pretty poor. Uh, when, you, when you consider that, you know, that, that Seema's strike rate, 11 in 24. Less games, more, you know, in terms of his actual finishing rate. From out wide as well. Lawrence Shankland, who was the top scorer in the SPL last season, averaged a goal every 137 minutes. Uh, far more effective. So look, you know, that's that's one situation. Also, tops, you know, goals in terms of league. Uh, James Tavernier scored 17 league goals last season. Now, even if you put into Dessa's the post split ones, it's 16, making the actually Tav outscored him. A right back outscored him. Yes, I know Tav takes penalties, so that's got a slight addendum, slight warning on that. But for me, Dessa's just does not convert enough chances. You know, when the pressure is on, when it genuinely matters. When does Cyril Dessa score? He doesn't. He doesn't do it in high-pressure situations. You want to say, oh, park it away, you got to go. Yeah, but we were already losing 2-0. Betis away, yes, but no one expected us to actually win that game, did they? So for me, if we can get some money, our money back, four and a half or even five, five and a half million, we should be snapping the hands off Power Salonica and taking the money. You know, this is a club that that is moving forward and we need to be pushing out those players who are not going to take us forward. You know, Coppen and Clement, Coppen in particular, you know, and Clement, I'm sure, is having a role in are doing a fantastic job in rebuilding this squad, bringing in some absolutely superbly talented young lads. You know, Diamande, who came in, fantastic. Cortez, very good indeed. Yes, I know we can't obviously talk about Nciala or, uh, or Igman, for example. Um, you know, we can't talk about those players yet because we don't know. Like Connor Barron, I think, will be an ex brilliant player for Rangers. 
Um, you know, he's already proven he can do it in the, in, in the Premiership. He's done it in the Cup. So, look, there's some great moves. I think, you know, if we can move out players who are not consistent enough, and that's one of my big gripes with Serial Dessers, is he's just not consistent enough. Doesn't take his chances on a consistent basis. That is his major weakness. And, look, you can argue all, all you want about him scoring 22 goals, but he, 28 big chances, guys. Is he consistent? Does he take them when he's under pressure? You know, is he an instinctive striker? No, he is not. People say, well, he played better if there was two up front. Yes, but we don't play with two up front, so that's not even worth considering, is it? And like I said, Abdallah Seema got on every 146 minutes. His chance conversion rate better from our wide than our striker. And I think that Seema would have outscored Dessers if he played through the middle. I think Danilo would have outscored Dessers if he played this season as well. So, look, realistically, if this story is true, I'd say take the money and run. Take the money and run. Guys, let me know what you think in the comments down below. Obviously, subscribe to the channel if you can, please. And on the way out, two things. Number one, smash that like, beat that algorithm. And number two, remember always, we are the people.